What is going on, you badass sexy beasts? Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic Saturday so far, and if it's not Saturday when you're watching this, hopefully your day is going fantabulously. So, on to the topic for this video, the World Domination Preseason. This metagame edition implemented on the 16th of this month seemed to have stirred quite a ruckus from the player base of Planetside 2, solely due to population imbalances shown from the sheer landslide of Terran Republic Domination. Posted on the forums, we've got some concerns of ours addressed. The focal point of player complaints have been in the form of population imbalances and is pretty apparent when looking at the World Domination Series site. To answer our problems, SOE has done some redesign of the scoring system. First of all, the total values of each outpost and facility is being dramatically increased in order to alleviate the situation of those pesky decimal values. So a small outpost will award 10 points per capture and 20 points per hour held. Large outposts will yield 20 points per capture with 30 points per hour held. And facilities, they will now yield 50 points per capture and 40 points per hour that they are held. The increase in numbers is just the start of the list of changes, with population being a huge factor for this change. Biggest impacts are the difficulty modifier, which affects how many points both capturing and holding locations will yield solely due to the amount of players that are online. So fully capturing the continent of Endar with a low population won't yield as many points as holding 50% of the territory of Esamir when it's filled to the queue with players. A new top dog bounty modifier is also going to be in play, giving a bonus to the factions attempting to dethrone the faction that is in lead for that particular server. For instance, if we take a look at the Miller server, we can see that the Terran Republic is utterly decimating the new conglomerate and the Vonner Sovereignty. So, once the bounty comes into play, the NC and VS will earn more points for capturing territory owned by the TR. This will help the servers that are being dominated by one particular faction and give the factions that are extremely far behind a chance to hold their ground. Now I know a lot of people are going to cry, Oh my god, fourth faction! And I'm fine with that. After all, the old phrase of enemy of my enemy is my friend seems to fit in pretty well here. Another modifier we're given is the territory value increase the longer that particular territory is held. The longer a territory is held, both the bounty for capturing said region and the hourly income given to the faction is increased every hour. Designed to help empires secure a foothold, this enforces the need to secure boundary holds for each empire, while also giving you an additional point boost for taking the enemy's lines. Final bit of changes are the additional points awarded for winning an alert. Designed for players who tend to log in during the off-peak hours for servers, it's to give the smaller crowds a larger impact on the World Domination series overall. So these are all planned later down the road, as well as the implementation of an in-game asset to show the World Domination series statistics for that particular server in which you are logged in, as well as overall. Additionally, some weekly challenges are being planned to come out and spice up the variety of the WDS. Some speculated challenges are bonus points for a specific continent, bonus points for winning an alert, or an increase in points for capturing large facilities. None of these changes are implemented quite yet, but are available for your viewing pleasure and even dropping your own feedback on the forums, which I will post in the description below. So, what is your favorite part of all the changes? Do you like the World Domination series in general? Personally, I am glad this has been put in place while we wait for the optimization patches coming down the pipe, instead of waiting around patiently until SOE is given the green light for content once again. But in all honesty, I think these recent hot fix, patch, hot fix patches tend to bring about more bugs than anything else. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a mega super awesome big ass thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then go ahead and subscribe. It's free!